Hi there, so I'm going to be taking a look at the issue of suspension forks getting sucked down into their travel. So this issue can be caused by a number of different things and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the various causes of it and then hopefully offer some solutions to it. So the way I find that this manifests in forks is that you'll suddenly notice the fork will start to feel much harsher than it has in the past, particularly over small bumps, so rocks and roots, where the fork generally, if it's set up right, will have a nice supple feel to it. So the initial part of the travel is just really smooth. And if the fork is sucked down, you'll be into the mid stroke of the fork where there's a bit more resistance. So the fork can feel a little bit wooden or dead. If this is developed even further, it can make the fork start to dive and then you can end up going over the bars. So as I say, I'm going to talk about the various causes and then hopefully offer some solutions. So let's get started. Right, so I'm going to show you what the actual issue is. It's easier to see on RockShox forks because they have the sag indicator printed on the stanchion, but this does affect other forks as well. It's just visually easier to see on the RockShox ones. So I have a set of RockShox Lyric 170mm forks here, and as you can see, they're too far into the travel, so they're not fully extending back out. When I lift up on the fork, you can get them to extend fully out, but then as you let go, it will return back to the sucked in portion of the travel. So I like to work in a logical fashion when I'm trying to diagnose an issue on a mountain bike. That way if it's something simple, I've saved myself a lot of time. And if it is something more complicated, I've at least eliminated the simple solutions and I'm not chasing my tail. So what we're gonna do is start with the simple solution and then work our way up. So the first thing I like to do is visually inspect the stanchions, make sure there's no scratches or gouges on them and check the seal as well to make sure there's no damage on it. You can see this fork has some slight scratches on it, but nothing too bad. If it is severe, I would uh, look into, you can use a nail varnish to cover it over if it's not too bad, but if it's pretty severe, you may have to replace the CSU or the crown steerer unit, which is the top half of the fork. But most of the time, they're usually just light scratches. This looks worse on camera than it is actually in person. Then what I like to do is clean the stanchions, make sure there's no dirt or grime on them, and also clean the seals, make sure that there's no dirt or grit in them. And what we're going to do is burp the seals first of all. It usually isn't this issue, but I like to do this because it's a simple thing to do and it's quick. So what you need to do is get a cable tie, and then what you're going to do is get the seal and take the tension off. You can do this by either removing the spring, which is on it, or you can just use your thumb and you're going to peel the seal back, take the smallest cable tie that you can find, and you want to just push down into the seal. You want to try and do this as straight as possible. It can be a little bit fiddly at first. You don't want to be going in at the side because you could damage the seal, so try to get it straight as possible and then just push down. This usually causes the opposite issue of the forks getting sucked down, it actually pushes it out. But let's say I like to try it first because it's simple. So once you've got the cable tied behind the seal, you just need to slowly push down, making sure it's straight as possible. And what you're listening for is some release of air. It will make a noise if there is any in the lower leg. I sometimes like to get my finger behind the cable tie and pull it a little bit to release the seal. Some forks actually have a dedicated button on the back of the lower leg to do this procedure. There was no actual air in this leg, so I'm going to do the same on the other leg. So on to the next thing that this could be, and this is most likely going to be the issue in most people's forks, which is on the air spring side, which is usually the left leg of the fork, there is a little transfer port which is stamped inside of the stanchion and what this does is it transfers the air from the positive and negative chambers and it allows it to balance itself out and what can happen is grease can get caught inside of this transfer port and this can cause it to become unbalanced and then this causes the forks to actually suck down. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and remove the grease. So what we need to do is take the wheel off the bike first. So once you've taken your wheel off, you're going to put your axle back in. I like to make sure it's clean and hasn't got any grease on because you're going to be putting your foot onto it. And also you like to use a pad spacer in my brake caliper 
just in case I touch the brake while I'm doing this. So you're going to get a cloth and place it under the fork just to add a bit of stability. Then you're going to take your foot and you're going to press it onto the axle and you're going to put your hands either side of the stem. And what you're going to be doing is pushing the fork down and then you're going to be pulling up as quick as you can. Right, so we're going to start pushing on this fork. You really are going to have to put some effort into this to make sure that you can create enough vacuum to suck the grease out. Now this, the sound we're listening for is a sort of a slurping or a sucking noise. This can be masked by the damper side, which can also make a similar sound. So you might not be able to hear this. So you may have to do this a few times and then just check to see if the fork has returned to its full extension. So I'm just going to put my foot on. And you're looking to push the fork down as far as you can get it and then pull up really quickly. So down and down and You can also do this from behind the fork, but I find it slightly easier to do it from the front because you can't quite get your foot in, but you can do it from the back. That way you can push the fork down and then pull up. So as I say, you may have to do that a number of times, but if it hasn't resolved the issue, you can try this alternative method, which is you're going to inflate the air spring to its maximum pressure. Handily, this one has the pressure printed on the fork leg, but if yours doesn't, make sure you find out what your fork's maximum pressure is. Then you're going to inflate your fork to that pressure, and we're going to repeat the procedure that we did before. Once you've got the fork up to its maximum pressure, just remove the shock pump. The noise that you hear come out of here is just the actual air that's trapped in this hose, not air that's coming out of the fork. So don't over inflate it, just put it to the pressure that you want it to be. So if that hasn't resolved your issue, we're going to be moving on to something slightly more complicated. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dropping the lower legs off the fork. So if you're not proficient with doing a service on your forks, I'd suggest taking it to a bike shop or a friend that can do this for you. And what we're going to be doing is removing the lower legs and then checking the air spring to see if there's any damage to the seals. And this involves these tools that you can see in front of you. So this varies depending on the forks that you have. So on the RockShox, it uses circlips to hold the air spring in place. On Fox forks, if I remember rightly, you need a pick to get it removed. So there's some slight variations. Obviously check for your particular fork. So the tools you're going to be needing are a soft-ended mallet for removing the lowers. You're going to need a shock pump to reinflate the fork, some rubber gloves, some allen keys, circlip pliers, some oil to replace the oil you're going to be taking out, some SRAM butter or equivalent, sort of a slick honey. And also, depending on how old your seals are, I advise getting some spare seals just in case they are damaged internally and you need to swap them out. And then you can get hold of seal kits for the air spring on RockShox forks as well as on Fox forks. But in this case, I'm going to be swapping it out for a debonair spring. So these are size specific, so you need to make sure you get the travel for your particular fork. But the procedure is uh, similar whichever way you do it. Once you've got your bike in the stand, you need to put on your gloves. I'd highly recommend wearing gloves. I've done too many lower leg services in the past and got oil over my hands and it's very corrosive and it tends to turn your skin into tissue paper. Speaking of tissue, you're going to need some paper towel as well. And I like to use a microfiber cloth as well for cleaning up the grease at the end. And you're going to need some sort of tray or tub to collect the oil that's going to come out from the lowers. I like to use this potting tray that I got from a garden centre because it's nice and wide and you can collect all the oil. We're going to start by removing the brake caliper. So you're going to need to remove the hose guide. Be really careful on these because they don't need a lot of uh, persuasion to crack. Uh, just need to remove this. I like to remove the little screw and put it at side because this thing tends to want to disappear on you. Remove your 
caliper. In this case, it's a five mil. That's normally a two and a half mil or a three mil, depends on the brand of fork. So once you've removed that, I like to use these magnetic trays to keep the bolts and screws in. Then what I like to do is get a freezer bag, put the caliper in it just to stop any chance of oil getting near it. Also make sure you've put a pad spacer in just to stop the brake from getting compressed in. I usually just put it in the bag and then just cable tie it up. And then you can just put it out of the way while you do the rest of the job. So you just got to remove the axle. So you're going to have to remove the air cap at the top and then take the pressure out of the fork. Sometimes do that with your finger, but if not, the Allen key to push the shader valve down and then pull up on the fork. You're not going to get all of the air out, but get the majority of it out. Then we're going to rotate the forks up. So depending on the stand you've got and the weight of your bike, I'd advise taking your rear wheel out as well. It just puts less pressure on the stand, makes it easier to work with. And we're going to remove the rebound dial. Uh, in this case, it's just a three mil. One thing I'd say as well is make sure you work out what your rebound already is set to, if you don't know, and then just dial it out so it bottoms out. Then undo it and remove it. Put that on your tray as well. Then you're going to be left with two foot bolts. I much prefer dealing with RockShox ones because the Fox ones are super snowflakey and tend to want to destroy themselves so I'd advise getting the proper tools for them unless you're willing to want to replace the nut. So you're going to need your mallet. So what you need to do is just undo these which can be a little bit tricky. Just undo them. I like to do about a turn and a half on them. And then what you're going to do is get your mallet and then you're just going to tap on the foot bolts to release the rods inside the lower legs. And then just remove the foot bolts. Then just hold your handlebars and then push down on the fork. I find if you pull up and then push down, you can sometimes get it to release. If it's not coming, just pop your foot bolt back in. Give it another tap. Should release it. You know when you've got it, because oil will start dripping out. There you go. Push them down, oil will come out. Be careful because the rods will be extended. You don't want to damage the inside of the lowers. I like to just put the lower legs vertically up just to let the oil drip out of them. And what you need to do is just get your paper towel, clean off the stanchions. I like to use suspension clean. And while you're here, it's worth inspecting the stanchions again, just to make sure there's no damage further down. Next, we're gonna remove the air spring. So this varies depending on the fork that you have. So for example, on the Fox forks, it uses a retaining ring that you're gonna need a pick to remove. And on the RockShox, it uses a circlip. Other brands will use similar sorts of ways of retaining the air spring. So check what your fork needs. So on this, we need the circlip pliers. RockShox recommend using a flat blade to push the air spring in and then push the little plastic notch to the side of the circlip 
So I'm just going to push it in here so you can see how it moves. So you need to push it in and then rotate it to the side. You can just push it in and use the circlip, but it can be a little bit awkward, so it might be easier to just rotate it to the side. Once you've got that off, now we're going to pull the air spring out. What I find can help with this sometimes, because it can be a little bit tricky to get it out, is put the foot nut back in the actual rod. That just gives you something to anchor your hand on. Get a rag, and then you're just going to push in and then pull out to get the air spring out. Might take a few pops, and then you get the air spring out. So this is where you're going to visually inspect the seals on the air spring to check for any damage. And if they are damaged and you're not going to be replacing the whole air spring, put the replacement seals on, reassemble the fork. But in this case, we're going to be putting a debonair spring in. So once your air spring's out, you're going to need to clean the stanchion out. You can also check in here to see if there's any additional grease. You can remove the air cap at the top and run a rag through it if you want to be extra vigilant on it. But I like to just put a bit of suspension clean in the stanchion and then just push a rag in. Then you're going to need some sort of rod to push it through. If you haven't got one, you can just use the air seal to push the rag in. And then just make sure that it's clean inside. Just visually inspect in the stanchion. You can actually see the transfer port inside. I'm not sure if you're going to get this on camera, but it's located about here on the stanchion. So just check that that doesn't have any grease in and that the stanchion is intact and doesn't have any damage. So in my case, I'm going to be swapping out the air spring for a debonair air spring. So I'm just going to show you the differences between them. So the main benefit of this air spring over the existing one is that it gives you a larger negative chamber in the fork, which aids with the actual small bumps compliance on the fork. So it's visually slightly different. This actually has a nut on the bottom compared to the existing one. This is where you actually screw the foot nut into so you don't remove that. So what you're going to need to do is put some grease, so slick honey or in this case shram butter, and you need to put that on the actual seals. So you need to put a liberal amount on the o-rings and check that everything's moving nice and smoothly. So I'm going to put the new air spring in, so you just need to angle it in slightly and then push in. You should hear it pop into place. And then you just need to push it in past the retaining gland. If it's not going in, just press down the Schrader valve just to release any pressure and then push in. It should get it to sit in place. Then you're going to put the retaining ring back in. This has a smooth and a sharp side and you need to make sure that the sharp side is facing outwards. And then you just need to get your circlip pliers, place it in, squeeze it in, push it. You'll know when it's in place because you can rotate it freely in the gland. And then that's your air spring in. Next we're going to be working on the lowers. So you just need to make sure that the oil is drained out. It tends to sit in the recess. And then you're going to check your seals for any damage. If they have got any damage, you're going to have to replace them. Also, you're going to have to check your foam rings. So you can use a pick to get these out. And then just get them. Oh, you can clean these off if they're not too dirty, or if not, replace them. So just get your foam rings, pop them. I like to use the lid of a spray can. Sit them in your oil, let them soak for 10 minutes. 
while you're doing other things. Then you're going to need to check to see if there's any damage on the bushings, which is that white part there. Generally isn't any damage in there, but just clean the inside. Again, you're going to need some sort of stick to push in. Once your foam rings are completely saturated, I like to just stretch them between two fingers and then get your fork lowers. Then you just need to feed it into the gland. It can be a little bit tricky to get it started. Just make sure that it goes in straight. If it's been a little awkward, I sometimes like to use the use a pick to just push it out and then just push it back into place. Make sure it's fully recessed into the gland. And this is just personal preference, but I like to put a little bit of shram butter on the actual inside of the seal. Again, this is just personal preference. You don't really need it, but I just think it makes the forks feel a little bit smoother. I'm going to put the lowers back on. I find this easier to do with the bike off the stand and upside down. I find it easier to fit the actual seals over the stanchion. You want to just guide them on. You want to be careful not to pinch them. I find if you go in at a slight angle and then just push them on, you'll feel them give way and then slide on. You know when they're on correctly because they'll just slide on smoothly. So you just need to push these down until they interact with the rods and then just pull them back a little bit so we can put the oil in. So just going to pull this back and then you're going to put the required amount of oil in. Then do the same on the other leg. Obviously this will vary depending on what fork you've got. So make sure you check. RockShox and Fox have pretty comprehensive guides for their forks. Then you just want to push the fork next to the rods and then just wipe off with suspension clean or isopropyl alcohol just to make sure there's no oil on the lowers. Then you're going to put the foot nuts back in, tighten these in. They do have torque specs that RockShox have on their site if you want to be extra precise, but I find just hand pinching them tight gets them in place. You'll soon know if you've not tightened them up enough, but you don't want to be cranking on them. Next we're going to reinstall the rebound dial. Be really careful with these because you only need to tighten them very lightly because the nut that's here has very fine threads and you can strip it. So you just want to do it just tight enough to hold it in place. So then you just need to put some pressure back into your forks. Get them up to your required pressure and then check the sag. Once you've got the pressure in the fork, what you're going to need to do is rebalance the positive and negative chambers. So to do this, you need to cycle the fork. You just need to compress it about halfway through its travel a few times to get the chambers to equalize. So you just push down. And then you might need to check your air pressure because sometimes it can go down. So just recheck that and then get it up to the pressure that you want it to be at. Once you've done that, the fork should be extending back out to its full length. On the RockShox fork, what tends to happen is the initial part, so the three to five mil of the stanchion can get lowered down. That's not actually a problem because it's designed to be that way. 
that's what gives the fork its nice supple feeling because it has no resistance in the very first part of the travel. What actually is the issue is if the fork is right down in its travel. So any further than that. I tend to try not to focus on the visual of the RockShox forks and concentrate more on the way it actually feels. You'll know whether it's got an issue because the fork will, as I've said before, feel harsh or it will start diving. So try not to keep too much of a, an eye on the visual. If you've got a Fox or another brand fork, you won't see this anyway, so you'll have to go on feel. So that was a look at the issue of suspension forks getting sucked down into their travel. If any of the suggestions that I've offered haven't resolved your issue, you might need to look into see if your damper has any issues. So you might need to get it rebuilt or you might need to get it replaced. Although it generally is the air spring side. But if you have any other comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the box below. I'm always happy to answer questions. And thanks for watching.